我是Alan,我是一个郭云。I'm Alan, I'm the Google Cloud developer and advocate. And most of the time, I do genome and machine learning. The next year, if I have some time for practice, I can use Chinese to talk, but thank you. This year, please allow me to use English to make the presentation. Okay. Um, and I realized that uh, uh, Android is more of a thing here, so I've uh, designed this talk and worked with one of my colleagues uh, from my team to talk about using the machine learning APIs with more of an Android uh, example emphasis. I'm not going to be showing much code, but I am going to be showing you uh, the returned data coming back from the APIs, and you can see how to use it to integrate with your application. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm tweeting out at uh, Alan Day. All right. Um, so I know you guys have already heard quite a bit about machine learning in several of the, the previous talks. It's basically a way to get uh, machines to uh, self-reinforce some rules to be able to recognize arbitrary patterns in data. That's coming from lots and lots of examples on the one hand, feeding through, getting feedback, and then allowing that to modify the behavior of the machine's output. So that's this examples and experience example we're giving here. Um, as a more of a concrete example, I can show you if we wanted to build a classifier that's going to give the difference between uh, these two types of fruit, we might um, want to build a rule that uh, detects the color. So you could say the apple is likely to be red, whereas the orange we're discriminating against is not. Uh, you might also use something like the, the color or the shape. Um, because uh, it's possible that the input might not provide the color channel. So in this case, you would potentially need to use a different set of rules. Now, as humans, we're pretty good at this, and somehow we have a, a brain in our heads that's able to, to build these kinds of uh, rules automatically, and that's what we want the machines to be able to do. Um, it gets more complicated, of course, as you introduce more examples of different types of objects. Here we're bringing in a mango now, and now the color uh, the color option is definitely out because the color of the mango is nearly identical to that of the apple. Um, and to take things even further, we don't necessarily want to just categorize three types of fruit, but we should be able to do this to arbitrarily, um, arbitrary sets of objects. Here I'm showing you, there's an example of a, of a dog and a mop, and it's pretty easy for, for these uh, two images because they have uh, virtually nothing in common. So this is a pretty easy one, you might think, to differentiate between dogs and mops. But if uh, I, I adjust the uh, example slightly and show you a sheepdog, this is called a commandor in English, um, it can be a bit difficult in, in some cases to uh, distinguish between the dog and the mop. This top row third image in particular, that one took me a while because on my laptop screen it was very small and I couldn't see the mouth. Um, yeah, so we want the machines to be able to detect this kind of thing as well. Uh, of course, expanding even broader, not only to fruits and dogs and mops, what about photos of everything? and to be able to identify those and have the machine be able to recognize and reason about the contents of some arbitrary collection of pixels. Um, and this goes beyond pixels, right? It's not only about photos, it's also about other types of unstructured data, such as video and audio and text. And we want the machines to be able to understand these data types as well. So when we talk about machine learning, it's really all of these um, types of data we want to be able to make sense from. OK, so uh, just giving you a very high level overview of the talk, um, I'm going to be talking about um, these machine learning APIs, which are shown on the, the uh, right side of the slide. Um, if you want to do things more uh, hands-on, we also have the underpinnings for these APIs. So everything on the left is built, uh, sorry, everything on the right is built from what's on the left, which is TensorFlow under the hood. This is an open source library. You can download it. It's the most popular open source um, machine learning library on GitHub. And you can also use uh, Cloud Machine Learning Engine, which is basically hosted TensorFlow. I don't have any more to say about that. Uh, we're specifically going to look at the vision API, speech API, some translation APIs, and uh, video, video intelligence API today. All right. OK, let's look at the vision API first. So just as an example um, of getting some business value over the, 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 um, the vision API, Disney is, is a customer of Google's. And they were using this to promote um, a movie that, that came out recently called Pete's Dragon. And uh, they made an Android app that was available to uh, fans of the movie who wanted to get more engaged with the brand. And they were able to go on a scavenger hunt and uh, take photos of objects around their home 
and have the, the image of Pete's dragon uh, superimposed on top of uh, their sofa, for example, sitting on the sofa, to get some personalized experience, personalized interaction um, with the characters from the movie. Um, in addition to um, uh, labeling, which is what that first example I was telling you was, labeling a sofa, for example, we can do things like detect faces, uh, read text, detect types of images uh, as something explicit, content, violent content, medical content, et cetera, depending on, um, uh, in a social media setting, for example, you want certain images to be filtered, uh, detection of landmarks and uh, logos as shown here. Um, here's an example of a uh, data payload that could be coming back from the face detection um, function that you can call on the Vision API. So you can see that we have a confidence that the fa there's a face present. Um, uh, you can see that there's uh, some bounding boxes around the faces. Uh, the three-dimensional rotation of the, the head within the, within the box, and then also some emotional states. So I think we give five or six different emotions, um, and here you can see that this, this person in the photo is, is likely to be experiencing uh, joy, very likely. Uh, landmarks we can detect as well. So here's an example. Uh, I was trying to trick the machine here, but it, 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 it was too clever and wasn't able to be tricked. Um, this is, you might imagine this is the Eiffel Tower, but you can notice there's a building underneath here, uh, it's actually not the Eiffel Tower. The latitude and longitude are correctly identified as being in Las Vegas, and this is in fact the Paris Hotel and Casino, which is uh, part of a, a casino in Las Vegas. Um, further, furthermore, we can, we can also uh, give some information like uh, crop hints of where would be a good, uh, good dimensions to crop the photo down to, to be aesthetically pleasing, um, do OCR, and uh, annotate with some, some web data. I'll show you an example of that here in a moment. Um, here's a picture of uh, a Ford Anglia. This is a prop from the Harry Potter movie series. Uh, my colleague I worked with to make this deck is a big fan of Harry Potter, so there's many Harry Potter examples in here. Um, it's located in Singapore. I'm based in Singapore, by the way. Um, in the Art and Science Museum in the Marina Bay. And so you can see that uh, this photo is specifically referencing uh, the Harry Potter series uh, as, as part of the, the content of the image. So we've recognized this is a prop from Harry Potter. Uh, this is kind of an interesting feature. If you ask for where the image existed on the web, this taps into Google's search index, and we can tell you where other examples existed uh, of this particular photo. And that's where some of those labels come from on the previous slide I was showing you, is we're actually looking at the text of the pages that contain these images to determine what's likely the content of the image to be about. Okay, if you want to play around with this thing, you can use... Um, cloud.google.com slash vision. There's actually an upload form that works on your mobile phone. If you wanted to play with it now, you can um, upload a picture from your, your, uh, your smartphone, take a selfie or take a picture of the audience, and it will tell you what's in the photo. Um, oh, in case you were wondering, we, we do correctly categorize these images. Uh, this was correctly labeled as a common door, and this is correctly labeled as a, well, almost right, a broom. Um, okay, let's take a look at the speech API. So another business example I'll give you, there's a company called Azar. They're um, making a, a social networking app that allows people to connect and chat with one another on the mobile phone. Um, they've done 20 billion matches so far since the app started, so it's pretty popular. And uh, it doesn't restrict matching to people who speak the same language. So what they're able to do in the case that uh, people want to interact with one another who aren't speaking the same language is to use two different APIs. So they use the speech API to turn the speech into text, and then they're using the text API, uh, sorry, the translation API to uh, take that text and translate it into uh, a target language. And we have uh, more than 100 different language pairs are available to do this with. You can um, take a look at this one at cloud.google.com slash speech. And uh, here's an example of uh, me playing with this thing in the browser. So the, the Vision API is similar. You can basically go uh, upload some data. So I'm going to tell it I'm um, going to say something in Chinese. And I think I say something like, Google kaifa zhi ni hao. Yeah. And then so it takes a moment to understand I'm done speaking because how it would transcribe could change if I said more things, right? So we need to get the words right. So now I grab that, I'm bringing it over to the translation API. Um, I can uh, paste that in here. Yeah, I'm not a robot, of course. As a developer, you don't need to worry about that, right? Um, and you can see that it's, yeah, okay, hello, Google developers. All right. Um, we also give information like uh, timestamps coming in. So if you want to segment out particular words, we tell you where they're coming from. 
and the confidence of the, of the phrase that was detected. Uh, and let's get into some more information about the uh, a translation API. So how many of you guys have used Google Translate? I bet, yeah, virtually all of you, because I see a lot of these green androids in the room, and I know they're giving them out at the booth over here. If you want a plush toy, that's where they come from. Um, I was in Japan recently. I wanted to order some uh, octopus. And it turns out that uh, the word for octopus in Japanese is uh, taco, which got kind of confusing for me because um, uh, as an English speaker, a, ta a taco is a, is a uh, tortilla filled with some kind of meats or vegetables that's part of uh, Mexican cuisine. But uh, it worked okay, and I was able to successfully complete the order by uh, showing this to the, uh, to the server in the restaurant and get my, get my fried octopus. Okay, so that's an example of, of how this Translate API could work. Obviously, as a developer, you don't want to have to reverse engineer this uh, using the, the mobile app. You want to be able to integrate this kind of capability directly into your own applications, right? So, uh, for example, this is how Airbnb is using this kind of application. Uh, on their platform, so Airbnb, for those of you who aren't familiar, is a, a uh, booking system for reserving uh, something like a hotel. So it's a place to sleep, but it's not necessarily sleeping in a hotel. It's sometimes sharing somebody's home, subletting of a home for a few nights. Uh, it turns out that on this platform, 60% of the bookings that are taking place are actually not um, between two parties where both the guest and the host are speaking the same language. And so what Airbnb is doing is uh, taking the listings for uh, the home and the description, as well as uh, the reviews that previous guests gave about the, the host or the property, and translating all that into the target language of the person who's browsing on the, on the website. So it's seamlessly translated, and the user um, doesn't need to know that the input language was uh, different than the target language that they are reading in. Um, this is also being used for uh, instant messaging between um, guests and hosts as they're coordinating whether uh, a guest is going to stay at a particular property or not. And it increases the likelihood that they're going to book, right, because they can speak in a language they, they're comfortable with. Um, it's pretty easy to use this thing. I think this is my only slide that has code on it. Um, basically, in, in Python, you can, you can build up the client, you send over the text, and it gives you back the translated value as a string. That's simple as that. Um, how this is working behind the hood, there's some, uh, a bit of a machine learning model here called a recurrent neural network. Um, we're marketing this under the phrase neural machine. And what it's doing is it's, it's basically uh, uh, pulling in some text and has some memory of the text as it moves along. And it's using, as you can see via the bolded lines, the context around any particular word to output the best translation. And you can learn more by looking at this short link here. Um, here's an example of, of the quality of using this neural machine translation versus uh, our first generation Translate API. Uh, this is an example where we're taking the uh, Spanish text uh, of Harry Potter. And uh, I know probably most of you don't speak Spanish, but um, this sentence here that in the middle that begins with La Señora Dursley, uh, we're referring to her with some pronouns called ella and sus, which means uh, her and her respectively. And you can see in the first version of the API, we didn't pick that up. So I'm showing you that uh, we translate her instead as he. So we went from a female pronoun to a male pronoun accidentally. And then uh, at the bottom, you can see we translated Seuss as there. So we somehow uh, also didn't understand we were referring to Mrs. Dursley, and we translated it as a plural pronoun. Whereas in the, in the final version, you can see that we got it correct uh, by remembering uh, through this neural machine, it should be uh, she and her refers to the original um, uh, Senora Dursley. So yeah, if you want to play with this, uh, there's again, you already saw my video, you can play with the translation API and get more docs here. Okay, natural language API, more text stuff for extracting entities, uh, extracting sentiment from uh, some text and pulling out syntax. Uh, an example of a customer using this is Wootrick. They are responsible for doing some net promoter score collection from, uh, uh, from various of their, of their customers. A net promoter score is this um, box. Sometimes you'll see this if you're uh, uh, browsing a website and you get a pop-up or something in the upper corner that says, hey, how satisfied are you with your experience today? Please let us know on a scale of 0 to 10. That's a net promoter score. Um, Wootrick also wants to collect some more detailed information, though, and they give this, they give this free text field to collect that data. Um, and they're able to use the, um, the language API 
to process that text, extract out sentiment to figure out whether it was positive or negative sentiment expressed in the, in the free text field, and how that correlates to the net promoter score. So that's useful. Um, and they're also able to detect the entities that are being discussed. So maybe um, the person writing the text is unhappy about price, or they found a bug in the documentation. We can actually figure that out by analyzing the, the text there, and then route the ticket accordingly to um, sales or to uh, product management accordingly, depending on what specifically was being mentioned in the text field. OK, um, we can also extract the entities. So that I was just mentioning this. We can detect things like figuring out uh, that J.K. Rowling, Robert Galbraith, and Joanne Rowling are all actually all the same person. And we can tell you the Wikipedia URL that refers to her. This is the author of Harry Potter. Uh, we can also figure out that British is um, uh, actually a modification, uh, 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 an adjective that corresponds to uh, a location, Great Britain. And there's a link. And we can also figure out that we're talking about a literary work of Harry Potter here. OK, um, sentiment, we can pull this out too, both the score and the magnitude. So this is um, whether the, the thing being expressed is highly positive or negative on a scale of negative 1 to 1. And then the magnitude from 0 to 1 of, of uh, how important to the, the context is that particular emotion being expressed. Uh, syntax, we have this available for a limited set of language pairs, or sorry, languages to uh, extract um, this type of tree structure from the grammar. I don't have more to say about that. So let's look at another example um, using, uh, using, using uh, the language API to extract some value from a data set. So I love this example because um, uh, I'm using Google Sheets all the time in sort of my day-to-day -day office work. And this is an a, a excellent example of showing you how machine learning is going to make its way into the general office productivity workflow. And we're giving an example of using um, the Kaggle data set uh, Air from Airbnb. So this is related to reviews on, a particu on, on listings, how did, how did guests uh, rate a particular listing in a host, loading that data into Google Sheets, and then processing it with the Natural Language API. All of the code I'm going to show you is available at this URL, so you can grab that uh, later. It's on the Google Cloud blog. So here's a video. Um, and I imported these data from Kaggle. You can see column F has some comments. And they may or not be in English. And we can actually use the built-in Sheets function detect language to put it in column G what the language is. And most of these, actually all of these on this are, sh are shown here are in English. Um, if the case it's not English, we can use Google Translate, which will translate uh, this built-in function as well, and put the output in column H. So what we want to do is put something in column I, which is that shows that we've extracted entities and sentiments. And so I have an app script that I'm showing here that's built into uh, all of Google's G Suite apps. And there's a function called mark entity sentiment. What this is going to do is it's going to iterate over all the rows in the sheet I was just showing you. And it's going to put a value in um, that far column over in column, I think it was i. Yeah, column i. So you can see we're putting a value complete there. The reason for this is if um, somebody entering data wants to put more rows at the bottom, we know that we already processed some of the rows and we don't need to reprocess them. And you can see this is dynamically filling in. It'll pop in in a second. Right. OK, so that's now running. And then um, what's happening is there's a new sheet where additional rows are being put in. So we're actually capturing what the entities were in column B and then some information about uh, what the sentiment was about the entity and how relevant that sentity wa en en sentiment was to the document. OK, once this is run across some set of records, I run it on all of them, we can actually create a pivot table to visualize the results. So you can see I'm going to. Um, pull in the entities as my rows. And it takes a moment, because it's quite a lot of records, actually. OK, and then uh, column B, I'm going to bring in the sentiment score. And I want the average score, because the entity could have been referenced in multiple reviews, right? OK, so now that's here. And we actually want the magnitude as well. So how important was that sentiment expression to the overall document? And let's take the average of that, too. So once we have that, we can use uh, charting to make a scatter plot of these data. OK, so it's average sentiment versus average score. And I'm just going to do some adjustment on the scaling here to show you what was important to the reviewers overall. You can see that, uh, in general, in the uh, far right, they were happy with the coffee house and with the, the host, Sean. And they weren't necessarily so happy with the bathroom or the keys and some other uh, mostly uh, cleanliness and convenience-related concerns to the, uh, to the property. So that's an example of using ML from Google Sheets with apps script. OK, if you want to play more with the natural language API, hey, this is also available. 
OK, let's look at the Video Intelligence API. So this one's pretty cool. It's kind of similar to the, um, to the uh, Vision API I was showing you earlier. But rather than taking a single image as input, it's taking a, series, a time series of images encoded as video as input. Um, customers, they, they love this thing. You can, you can go down to the individual frame level and detect what the objects are in the frame. That's doing something very similar to what the, the Vision API is doing. But we can also extract higher level features above a single frame, such as the, uh, a shot. And I can show you um, an example of that. So here's a video. Uh, I've already pre-processed this one. It's a video of some um, primates. And there's Jane Goodall speaking here. So you can see we're at shot 14 of 35. And then now we're at shot 15, and then shot 16, and so on. And um, because I pre-processed this, there's some JSON available that pulls out the labels that were present in that particular shot. So you can see you know, we're 95% confident there's a tree here. Here we've got some wildlife again. Maybe we're at a tourist destination, uh, et cetera. Trees. It's lots of trees. Here, an insect, right? And in, the insect is an invertebrate. Uh, didn't pick up the snake in this case. He's pretty well camouflaged. Waterfalls. Uh, et cetera. So you can do this with your own videos. Uh, to give you a bit of more information how that application works is a video gets uploaded to cloud storage. We're using uh, a tool I'm not talking about today called Cloud Functions to detect that a file was dropped in Google Cloud Storage. Um, that sends a request over to the Video Intelligence API, which returns back a JSON document that is stored in Google Cloud Storage. So then we have a video and a, um, a JSON file that uh, are corresponding to one another. And then the front end built an app engine can actually access both of those documents in parallel to make that interactive visualization that I was just showing you. And uh, there's code available for this. I have the URL on my last slide. Um, to give you a bit more information about what does that uh, uh, document structure look like coming back from the, the Video Intelligence API, there will be some description. So previously, I was showing you tree and invertebrate, et cetera. This shot is a picture of the White House in the US from overhead. And uh, we've labeled this as bird's eye view as one of the annotations. It has a particular start time and end time offset that the bird's eye view is occurring at, um, as well as the confidence that we had, uh, had detected it. So you could conceivably use this for pulling out all of the um, primate shots from the previous video, for example. Or if you were going through a vacation reel, all examples of uh, places where people's faces are occurring. OK, and if you want to play with this one, um, you can't upload your own video here, last time I checked, anyway. Um, but we have a few videos that are pre-annotated. Pre and you can uh, run through them and take a look. And you can upload your own videos, obviously. Uh, OK. so. Uh, just to recap, I was talking to you today about the Vision API, Speech API, Natural Language API, Translation API, and the Video Intelligence API. The URLs are all pretty similar at cloud.google.com. Um, if you want to grab some of the code from that last example I was showing you, uh, the link is here, uh, two links here at the bottom in uh, Sarah Rob, my colleague's uh, uh, GitHub repo. And then uh, uh, my apologies, the link for the Google Sheets um, example is not on this slide, but it's on our previous slide, and you can, you can grab that as well. If you just search for apps script on cloud.google.com, uh, you should be able to find, uh, find that one. OK, thanks for um, coming and listening to me talk about the machine learning APIs. Uh, welcome to take, I'm happy to take any questions outside. Thanks a lot.